Hello guys, my name is Emmanuel, and today we're going to do a Star Wars tier list from worst to best. I know someone requested me to do this, so thank you for literally wanting me to record to, record, to do this. So let's not waste any more time and dive right into it. So then we're going to start off now from, from, back, from the beginning to end. So let's start off with episode one, The Phantom Menace. I do think this movie is really actually really good. It's not that bad. It's actually a really decent film with decent characters, decent villain, etc. But not near as perfect as the other movies I mentioned later. And actually, Darth Maul is actually a decent villain, including Darth Sidious and everything like that. And it's kind of and literally it's kind of and Jar Jar Binks is not it's not a hateful character. It's actually really really funny. I don't know why people get get I don't know why people hate him or something. So yeah, this movie is actually really good. Not that bad, but not near perfect. So this movie deserves well. Let's just say um an eight, a nine out of ten. Yeah, nine out of ten. There you go. Next film we're gonna talk about now is Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. I know people are gonna agree with me or disagree with me, but this film is literally another good film, another Star Wars film that's actually really good, not that bad. I do love the action sequence with the when the battle droid, the separatists in the Republic are fighting Genosis. It's actually really entertaining, not gonna lie. And Jingle is my favorite villain of all time, including Count Dooku. And well, yeah. Despite that, I mean, I know people are looking at me because, well, I remember this film getting too much hate only because of Anakin, the stupid dramatic. But I do think his acting is really good. Who, who actor, the actor who played Anakin, it's actually did a decent job playing as Anakin. So, um. So this film is also deserve a nine out of ten because well, it's really a good film but not near a masterpiece like the other film I'm gonna the other film I'm like gonna mention later. So I get this movie. I get I'm gonna give this movie a nine a nine out of ten. So there you go. For the next for the next film in the franchise is oh boy the greatest film of all time, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. This film is probably one of the darkest Star Wars films I've ever seen. And probably everyone's favorite Star Wars film from the prequel trilogy. And yet they're not alone. This film is literally the most darkest Star Wars films ever made. And George Lucas literally had the balls to like just make this movie. Because, I mean, this guy literally showed us Junglings getting murdered right in front of our faces. Well, not technically didn't see, didn't show us Anakin just slaughtering. But yes, he does show... The sequence before the in the whole before the death the door <clears throat> before the brutal one. And yes, the jungling the, the, the death the death of the junglings are really sad, not gonna lie. And well I do love the transformation of Anakin to Darth Vader. I still kinda feel bad for Vader because he just get him like tortured. I mean get him like manipulated by Papa team and etc. And well I do love the new villain called Gen new villain New one called General Grievous and etc. So this film is actually really a masterpiece for me because it's it's truly like one of the greatest Star Wars films in the prequel trilogy. So this film deserves a ten out of ten. Oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot the Clone Wars. Sorry guys. I literally was out not the other timeline, so Alright, where the hell is there it is. Alright, Star Wars the Clone Wars. It's both a TV show and a movie, but I didn't, I didn't have heard this movie or TV show or, yeah. I mean, I do watch a few clips of it, but it's literally really not that bad. I do love the Clone War. I do love the Clone Wars era, including the entire Pico trilogy, so this film is actually not that bad. So, um, I do love the, the whole, where the I do love the whole continuation between Attack of the Clones and this film, or TV show or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's because I mean, there's actually a two separate things about this about this about this show and movie. It's before it was actually released as a movie, and then afterwards it was released as a TV show. 2010-2013, So yeah. So this film is actually really as as good as the other Star Wars, as the episode one and uh, new uh, episode one new uh Phantom Menace and episode two and uh Attack of the Clones. So this movie deserves an eight an eight out of ten. 
As for this one, the Star Wars, the Clone Wars, well, this is some kind of like, uh, yes, this takes place right after the few seasons that this one is like a continuation of the Clone Wars, and right and right near to Revenge of the Sith because it does include the order the order six order sixty six sequences sequence when Captain Rex get manipulated by Palpatine, just orders him to like just murder Ahsoka Tano. And well, this film is actually really not that bad, but no, I mean this see, I mean this see, this this show is really not that it's really not that bad. It's still really good. So this one deserves in the same spot as the Star Wars: The Clone Wars because it's actually really good and really good. And afterwards, here comes Solo: A Star Wars Story. Well, you know what. Well, this film is really okay, but it's not near as perfect. It just it's literally just a mech. It's not that really that perfect. It's just it's literally just media. It's really mech because well, I haven't watched this movie, but I, I do. Well, yes, it, it's really interesting to see a uh, a backstory of Han Solo and Chewbacca or whatever. But well, you know, there's no need to like just get a backstory of Han Solo. And well, this film is okay though, but yeah. I'm going to give this film a 5 out of 10 because it's not that bad, but not great. Or should I say, yes, it's not that bad, but it's not great. So, yeah, this is just, yeah. Or the next, I mean, should I say next film or season, I mean, series, I mean, is Star Wars Rebels. So, this film takes place right after, a few years after Revenge of the Sith, including Solo a Star Wars Story, or I think... This TV show, like, it was released in 2014. Well, I haven't watched this show, but it is still okay. I mean, it's actually really at the same level as Star Wars The Clone Wars and Clone Wars The Clone Wars TV show and movie, including the follow-up. And, well, this film, this season, this TV series, this, this, <clears throat> this series is actually really great. It's actually not that bad. I do love the characters. I do love... But, I mean, I do love Chopper because, boy, he's, he's kind of, well, I mean, he's kind of hilarious when he's, like, acting like a huge jerk towards our main characters. But, actually, kind of funny. And Ezra Bruce is actually one of my favorite, my favorite characters from the show. And, well, yep. And actually, I also love the cameo between r 2 and C-3PO. And, actually, one of my favorite parts of the, of the show. So, yeah. So this movie deserves an 8 out of 10. Right at the same level as, well, you know, the other TV shows that take place before the original trilogy. So now we're going to start off with Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. So um, this film was literally, some people say it's the best of the best of the Disney, Disney era of Star Wars. I mean, I also love the Rogue One because it literally takes place right before A New Hope. And by far one of my favorite films, Star Wars films of all time. And boy, yes, despite it didn't, well, I mean, you know, whatever. The villain is actually really great. I do love, well, I do not like the uh, the way they use CGI on Tarkin because it just felt really unrealistic. I mean, I remember back in the, remember a few movie, a few movies like Back to the Future. Where they use another actor, you put makeup on him and just pretend that's actually the actor who, the original actor was playing at him, but in reality it was not. So it's kind of useless to just use CGI and not just makeup to pretend that they actually pretend that they use the same actors before. But you know, whatever. So this film is actually really good, not that bad. So I'm gonna get this movie. Well, I'm gonna get the same level as the only thing yeah, I don't like about this movie is because they use CGI on General Tarkin. Because it looks so completely fake, and I mean completely fake, yeah, yeah, whatever. So this film deserves right on like it's nine or ten. So I'm gonna put this movie as well. You know, it's kind of remember which one is. I'm gonna. I i do not know which one I'm gonna put. So you know, it's it's actually a really good film. So I'm gonna give this movie a nine out of ten. It's actually really good. And boy, oh boy, let's start with the original trilogy. And let's start with Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. The film that started all, the first Star Wars movie ever made. Well, it's not the first Star Wars film 
in the timeline. Like, if you first start watching in the time in the timeline is episode one, The Phantom Menace. Well, yes, I understand that this film was released back in the <clears throat> back in nineteen seventy seven, and it was the first Star Wars film ever made. We're not technically the first in the timeline, but it's still a, a underrated masterpiece. But it's it's really a a masterpiece. Because, well, it was the first Star Wars movie ever made back in the 1970s. It was actually one of the greatest Star Wars films of all time. So this movie deserves a 10 out of 10. Because it literally was the first Star Wars film ever made back in 1977. And let's start with the sequel, Empire Strikes Back. And boy, oh boy, I do love this film. I do love just like The New Hope, including with The Return of the Jedi. I'm going to talk about later. And well, this film is actually one of the greatest Star Wars films ever made during the original trilogy. And it's actually one of the, my favorites. The darker tone, the reveal that Anakin, the reveal that Darth Vader is actually Anakin's, um, I mean, Luke Skywalker's father. It's actually kind of, man, it's actually really cool that uh, they finally revealed it. I bet the people literally were shocked when they realized that Darth Vader was actually Anakin. I mean, Luke Skywalker's father. And I deal with the meme was a no. No. So yeah, I too love the meme when Duke says that during the fight, during the during the battle of Cloud City, with Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. So, I do love I do love I also do love the battle of Hoth. It's actually one of my favorite sequences in the Star Wars franchise, where where they use stop motion, where they actually use. I mean, I'm talking about the effects. Also, do you guys know that Phil Tippett is who actually? Remember he actually worked on Jurassic Park, did all this, the original original one to do stop motion for the dinosaurs. But we actually did the stop motion effects for the um for Star Wars episode um for Star Wars episode Fire Empire Strikes Back back during the eighties. He actually did one of the the AT 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 and effects during the Battle of Hoth. It's actually one of the most impressive effects of all time. So yeah, this movie deserves the same level as the other films. So I'm going to give this one an eye of 10. Because it's actually really a great film. Alongside... Oh, no, 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 no. Put it at 10 out of 10, sorry. Because all, them, all the original trilogy is really the GOAT. And as for The Return of the Jedi, it's actually another well-made masterpiece as well. Doing the original trilogy. So that's because... It's not because, well, I'm not going to say this, but it's just, it's kind of weird that, you know, whatever. This film is literally, really, on really, my one of my favorites in the original trilogy, alongside the, the other films. And I do love, I do love the planet of Endor, and, I, and the Ewoks are actually one of my favorite, well, you know, my favorite, my favorite characters in the film, where they actually just fall back against the Empire by using sticks and stones, or... Even flying in, in their, you know, whatever. But, well, from the Stormtroopers' perspective, they look kind of creepy and looks like made up and just given PTSD. But from the hero's perspective, it looks, they're really, really cute. But if the Stormtroopers are gonna like, gonna like mess with them, yeah, they would probably get them some PTSD because of like attacking them, which is like, he was like, hey, fuck you. Fuck you for attacking us. Get him, Ewoks. Get him. <laughs> That's my, not my, my, my perfect Ewok impression. But, you know, whatever. This film is really that all that. It's really, it's really another masterpiece. It's just like the original trilogy. So, there you go. And, well, let's start off with another TV show. It is Mandalorian. Or on Disney Plus or whatever. This film is probably... This film... This, this series takes place right after Return of the Jedi, and it's actually another D, another great film, another great TV show. I mean, yeah, I do remember watching this season. I mean, do watching this this TV show with my parents, or yeah, my parents, and my mom, and my my mom and my best friend, and my friend, not my father, because my father's already at work. So I worry. I remember watching the first season. It's actually a blast for me. It's actually one of my favorites. So I do remember watching the first, first episode or second episode. I think I don't remember, but it, it's still really one of my favorites. So I'm gonna get this film. No, it's not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give this. An, okay, I'm <clears throat> actually meant that I do love this 
show, and that's it. And I do love Mandalorian Baby Grugu, and I do love the uh, Return of Boba Fett, and etc. Including Luke Skywalker, and etc. So this this series deserves an uh, like an, a 9 out of 10, because it's actually one of my favorites. And, well, the story with Star Wars Resistance. Well, I didn't watch this show, I never heard of it, so... I know uh, you guys tell me in the comments that you guys watch this series or no because I haven't heard it. Or watch the plot or what is the me, what it take place or yeah whatever. Well, I mean it does take place during the the sequel trilogy, but I didn't watch this show and thank God because I do hate the sequel trilogy. So I'm gonna mention that later. So this this series is a uh, I didn't ha I'm gonna put this and haven't heard of it because I didn't watch the show. We only heard about the Clone Wars and the Rebels, including Mandalorian. And boy, oh boy, here comes one of the worst films ever made. Yup, the fucking sequel trilogy. And boof, let's just start off with Star Wars The Force Awakens. Boof, this movie's so fucking bad. This film is really one of the worst. The start of the worst trilogies of all time. I do hate Rey because she like... I mean, not, I do, I do, I, <clears throat> well, I do feel, I do not hate on the actors who participate in this film, and I do hate when, like, Disney tries to, like, make this film, like, but, I mean, Disney completely changed the ideas from the original trilogy, I mean, they copied the same plot, plot ideas from the original trilogy, and, like, like, when, like when the uh the main character discovered the main falcon when the when the star killer base looks like the it looks kind of look like the same it looks like the death the copy version of the death star and well kylo ren is a decent villain but it's nowhere nowhere as per nowhere nowhere near as perfect as darth vader darth sidious darth maul or etc he just he's really kind of bland villain i mean he's the one who like carries that film but still I do hate when Han Solo gets, like, killed off in the film. And, well, yeah, I do hate this film. This is probably one of the weakest entries in the franchise. So, this film deserves a 1 out of 10. Because I, this film is literally one of the worst. Because, I mean, I should have said, I should have said the most rubbish film in the franchise. So, or should I say the most mediocre film in the franchise. And boy, oh boy, the next film is probably way worse, including the next film as well. Star Wars The Last Jedi. This film is probably one of the black sheep in the franchise because by fans. Because they literally treat Luke like an idiot or a complete, a complete idiot and just like, looks like he's not even trying. And didn't want, I mean, yes, at least he finally turned to go. <coughs> At least he finally goes to find a battle, but in reality he was actually using his force, the force, so that he can like pretend he was there. Which it was a complete like complete obsession uh um complete upset as so I was actually really upsetting for the fans who actually saw Luke die in the film because he w I mean I thought Lucas was actually gonna fight all the entire for the entire First order, but no, he just actually used the force, like uses them as a distraction, so that the heroes can actually escape. And well, yeah, this film is actually one of the worst films they've ever made. So yeah, zero out of ten. It's pure garbage. Oh my god, the the later the la the next film is probably way worse, just like the the last Jedi. I cannot believe I actually watched this film in theaters. No joke, I did watch this film in theaters. One of the worst mistakes I ever made. Not fair. It's actually not fair. Yeah, this film is probably one of the worst Star Wars films ever made. Because I cannot believe they killed off Leia. And literally just like made an awful explanation of how in the hell Palpatine returned. Because, I mean, he died in the, in the, in the Return of the Jedi. He died in the Death Star. The Death Star completely exploded into pieces. There's actually no way that Emperor Palpatine somehow returned for some reason. It's like they didn't give a no they didn't give I mean the producers didn't give a fuck about how in the hell Palpatine returned or etc. It's just like it's just like it's like they just like like plot I mean 
They were just like, nah, fuck this. We didn't even care that Papa Team returned. You didn't care how the hell he fucking returned. You just, you just don't want to give him a surprise for the fans. Well, the fans are just gonna just be upset because there's like no absolutely way that Emperor Papa Team returned. And also, the producers just tried to like fix some mistakes from the previous trilogy. I mean, from the past film. By the way, trying to do things, you were trying to like, boy, not, I, I mean, <coughs> trying to fix some mistakes from the fast film, like not destroying Kylo's, Kylo, Kylo Ren's mask, or when, or when Ray managed to like get his like get her lightsaber back, which is so, like a rush film for like, this is like they like it's like <coughs> it's like they try to like fix some mistakes that fans would not know. And well, yeah, this film is probably one of the worst Star Wars films ever made. So yeah, you know, actually, all the Star, all the sequel trilogy, literally sucked. The entire sequel trilogy fucking sucks. No questions asked. No more response asked for why I think this the, the sequel trilogy sucked. There you go. I'm gonna make the, the fans happy that all the the entire sequel trilogy fucking sucks. So there you go, guys. There goes the entire. Tier list of all the Star Wars films and TV shows from worst to best. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. And see you guys next time. See ya.